Hello there. Uh, welcome to... Well, I, I can't quite remember. I'm a partial digital scan of... Uh, well, I, I can't remember that either. Look, to be honest, I could use a little bit of help. Inside this container is a small sphere. That's me, or at least it's part of me. Either you're an intruder, or you were sent here to find my creator, the real me. Since you haven't made off with a fine china yet, I'm guessing you're the latter. If you can finish me, perhaps I'll be able to help you. Virtual reality is pretty amazing. From fast-paced action shooter games all the way through to quiet, chilled out exploration experiences, VR invites you to put on a small headset and inhabit a world that didn't exist just a second before. In a lot of ways, virtual reality is one of the best deliveries we've yet had on the core promise of video games. The chance to do and experience things that we don't do in our everyday lives. The chance to go somewhere new. In 2014, Oculus released their second development kit to the world, and I've personally been obsessed with virtual reality and its potential ever since. I've been building worlds for years now, and oftentimes it takes months from start to finish on a project for you to see a return on your initial concepts. And because I'm impatient, I wanted to see if I could get that same feeling of return, of payoff, in just seven days. I wanted to make something that others could play, that I could share with people, a game that would invite them into a world and let them be a part of a story. And I knew that if I was going to do that, I was going to have to be very focused about it. I have been planning on doing a project like this for quite some time, but the opportunity to do it inside the Game Jam meant that I had to force myself to stay within the seven day target, and it also let me meet some great game developers along the way. Right from day one, I was worried that I wouldn't have enough time in this week to achieve what I wanted to achieve. That meant that the second the Game Jam opened, the first thing I had to do was to make a good plan and to figure out what it was I thought I could do in the seven day period. I knew that I wanted this game to be centered around a story. That meant that the first thing I needed to figure out was the sequence of events that the game was going to play out. From there, I could map out the different things that each part of the sequence would require and I could figure out if I thought it was reasonable to make it within the week. If the answer was no, I'd just rewrite the sequence and make sure it stayed within a tight scope. My first task was to write a script. I knew that I wanted voice performance in this game and I knew that I wanted to commission it out. So step one was to write a very quick script that accounted for everything that could happen in the game and all the changes I might want to make and then find someone that could perform it. And once that was done, I could get to the laboursome and time-intensive task of actually building out the game's assets and mechanics. I started off by importing a level that I've been making in my free time over the last few months. It's of a sci-fi house and I think its base architecture is really cool and it's got a lot of different spaces that you could tell stories in, but it definitely wasn't complete. Step one was to strip out anything that I didn't need for the game, such as the old vegetation, and to convert this level into a blank template that I could build the game on top of. Now I think that most VR games are all about interacting with your world, and so to that end I brought in a physics interaction system that I've been building over the last few months, and very quickly got it up and running inside the game. It's a pretty modular system and it didn't take too long to implement, and with it I had a really good base for which I could start interacting with the objects that would make up this world. Next up, I began producing some of the props that the player would be interacting with throughout the game. For example, this is a small metal sphere that the player is going to store on their wrist. This object is the avatar for the non-playable character that we fleshed out earlier, and for whose voice performance we're currently waiting. Although the goal for this week is only a prototype game, I still wanted it to look visually good, so I did spend a fair amount of time on the assets that the player would be working with. Once I'd made a few parts, 
I could begin working on some of the mechanics that the player would experience inside the game. For example, at the beginning of the game, the player has to complete this sphere. And once I'd modelled a few parts and was happy with the pace of my workflow, it was time to get the rest in. So I began modelling and implementing all of the props that I'd scripted out at the beginning in the planning phase. This did take a couple of days and go through a few iterations as I was building mechanics along the way, but I did try to stick to the initial plan and the initial script as much as I could. The game's got a pretty big focus on environmental exploration and problem solving. So each room is meant to represent a puzzle or a small challenge for the player to solve. The player has to be able to intuit a problem when they see something, then go off and gather the pieces to complete a puzzle or to finish a challenge. When it's done, it needs to give them that sense of satisfaction of solving the problem, as well as being just a little bit surprising. Once I was happy with most of that, it was time to start looking at the lighting and converting it up from Unreal stock to something that suits the theme of the game. For a little bit of extra realism, I decided to use HDRIs, and after an awful first attempt, it started coming together and casting a lovely, warm, sunlit glow over my entire scene. Combined with a tinted directional light, this made for a really great sense of atmosphere across the level. Because I didn't have time to model all of the pieces that I wanted to be shown inside this level, I had to find other ways to do more modeling than I could have done given the time. To solve this, I turned to Mega Scans by Quixel and Epic Games, and to be honest, it's pretty fantastic. I used it to supplement my own asset library, and it was a really great way of fleshing out the world that I'd built. A good chunk of this game takes place underground in an old bunker that was built hundreds of years before the game takes place. My original plan was to model this bunker myself and to put all of the dirt and detail and grime in myself, within a week. Fortunately, I didn't have to. When I started exploring kit bashing with some of these mega scanned props, I was just using them as a placeholder until I could build my own assets, but they looked so convincing and they brought such a level of realism and warmness to the scene that I ended up working with them. I'd say the bunker element was 50% mega scans and 50% my own modeling, and I found a way to interface them so that it looked really convincing. With three days left, I started finishing off any of the mechanics that I hadn't finished, such as the ability to dock that small sphere to the player's wrist. Initially, I encountered a few bugs, but I was quickly able to work through them, and it was actually quite a satisfying mechanic in the end. This was around the time I received the performance for my NPC character, and I was really happy with the delivery. Let's have a listen to some of what came through. Hmm, what? Oh, yes. Hello there. Uh, welcome to... Well, I, I can't quite remember. Still locked, I'm afraid. Finish my mind off, then I can get you in. Here we are. Head in when you're ready. Personally, I was really, really thrilled with the delivery. I always love it when a performer takes your script and when they repeat it back, it surprises you and makes you feel the kind of emotions that you hoped others would feel. It brings it to life and it makes it more than just yours. And I find that absolutely wonderful. Once I'd done this, it was time to get the performance in the game. It's a fairly straightforward process of writing a voiceover system and making sure that it is dynamically able to deal with different triggers from different kinds of player actions and not to talk over itself. And with the voice acting in, as well as the music which I did at the same time, it was time to model the final sequence of the game. I needed its environment to be kind of unsettling, almost like it wasn't built for humans, but just familiar enough that the player would be able to read the space and navigate it. After this, I built a quick spatialized VR menu. Now I find that in virtual reality, most of the time, menus are better when they're in 3D, when you can pull levers and push buttons. That's not to say there's no space for flat screen menu functionality as well, but for a fast prototype game, the best way of building a quick basic menu was to do it in 3D. And here's how it turned out. It was fairly straightforward. I added the teleport function after the jam submission after a few players had requested it, but otherwise this is about how the game's menu looked when I submitted. 
I spent the final day polishing, playtesting, bug fixing, and making sure that the sequence timing was where I wanted it to be. But once it felt okay, that brought me to the end of my seven day period. Now the game takes between 10 minutes and half an hour to play or so, and I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing here, but I would like to show you the beginning and to show you the kind of atmospherics that I was going for in the game. Yes. Hello there. I welcome to... Well, I, I can't quite remember. I'm a partial digital scan of... Well, I, I can't remember that either. Look, to be honest, I could use a little bit of help. You see, I, I was never finished. I'm a work in progress. If you press that red button, I'll show you what I mean. Inside this container is a small sphere. That's me, or at least, it's part of me. These are meant to be neural processing lobes attached to that core. And I'm afraid I haven't any clue where they've got to. Either you're an intruder, or you were sent here to find my creator, the real me. Since you haven't made off with a fine china yet, I'm guessing you're the latter. If you can finish me, perhaps I'll be able to help you. Have a look round the house. There should be four lobe quadrants. Bring them back to the core, please. There we go. Now to integrate. Fantastic. Now, if you could grab that, you can store it on your wrist. I can feel more of my mind now. It's all there, but it's... it's still confusing. I'm sorry. Digitizing a consciousness is difficult. It's messy. The mind will be confused for a while in its new environment. I'm afraid I have a question for you. And that's as much as I'm going to show in this video. For anyone that does have a PC VR headset, I've put a link to this game in the description below and you can play it for free right now if you'd like. If you don't yet have a VR headset, just leave a comment if you want to see a full playthrough and I can put that up on this channel as well. I'm fairly happy with the week's outcome and what I was able to achieve, but there are a few things I would love to change if I had more time, and perhaps one day I'll be able to. The main thing I want to do is build a much more immersive dialogue delivery system. That involves the player a bit more, rather than just having them stand there when dialogue's being played. Apart from that, I think this game's a good prototype of what could be a really fun, enjoyable, exploration and puzzle type game. It's a type of game that I've absolutely loved playing since I was a kid, and I had an absolute blast building one for cutting edge tech. At some point in the future, I might revisit this concept. But for now, that's it. A game built in one week using Unreal Engine and done because I thought it was fun. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time I build something on this channel. Until then, take care.